Here are some important reminders to help ensure that you and your family are safe. Wash your hands thoroughly and regularly with antibacterial soap for at least 20 seconds. When soap and water are not readily available, use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Please try to avoid crowded places and make sure you are at least one to two meters away from others. Never leave the house without your face mask and face shield. Make sure your face mask covers your nose down to your mouth. Get vaccinated. Register with your local government unit. Remember that the best vaccine is what's available to you right now. Make the most out of the online services that are available today. If you must leave your home, please sanitize your belongings and bathe immediately upon return. Remember, WOW 2.0. Wash your hands. Observe social distancing. Wear your face mask and face shield. Get your two shots. Please attend our online services and meetings. Our safety is of utmost importance so that when we physically gather again together as a church, no one will be missing. Be safe. Thank you. And welcome to the online service of Without Walls Ministries. My name is Lara Alcaraz. If you are new to our online service, we invite you to visit our website for a quick introduction about Without Walls Ministries. We gather in small groups called life groups throughout the week to read and share the word and just check up on one another. Please email us at community at withoutwalls.ph if you're interested to be connected to a life group. Then there's Wow Wednesday. It's a middle of the week online gathering to help us review our lives and see how we can cope better. If you are looking for a place to begin your spiritual journey, then Wow Wednesday is a good starting point. Join us every Wednesday, 7 p.m. via Zoom. Now let us all ready our hearts to worship the Lord. And could not see you did not give up on me save me from my guilt and shame you stepped into the world you made and on the cross of Calvary you gave and 
throne Was laid to rest behind the stone But death would not have a final say Jesus, you rose from the grave Faith, 
with one voice a thousand generations sing worthy is the lamb who was slain and on that day we join the resurrection and stand beside the heroes of the faith with one voice a thousand generations sing worthy Good morning. Our reading is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 2 and 3 of the New Living Translation. And we sent Timothy to visit you. He is our brother and God's co-worker in proclaiming the good news of Christ. We sent him to strengthen you, to encourage you in your faith, and to keep you from being shaken by the troubles you were going through. But you know that we are destined for such troubles. This is the word of the Lord. morning without walls. Wow, we're here again another Sunday. Praise God that we can uh, be together and uh, uh, read uh, the Word together and uh, just listen to what God has in store for us. Um, The verse that was just read, um, well, This verse is um, a letter of Paul to the Thessalonians and he's encouraging them because they were suffering from persecution from those that did not believe in the gospel that was being preached. And he was telling them that he was sending them Timothy to encourage them. Uh, You know, let's look at those parts of those verses again. It says says here that... um, you're being shaken by troubles. But you know, Paul says that uh, we are destined for such troubles. Uh, wait, uh, did, you, know, it, you know, when you read it, you go like, whoa, did I get that right? Um, isn't it supposed to say, like, I'm destined for happiness? But that's not what it says. It says uh, that we are destined for trouble. And suffering. The title of my message today is The Business of Avoiding Suffering. Sometimes trouble or suffering can hound you for months um, and can sometimes for years, and depending on the the gravity of the problem. one can suffer almost beyond what one can bear. 
a pastor friend of mine uh, that was uh, getting a lot of pressure from the problems he was facing mm. was starting to think of a way of ending his life. But of course, he wasn't considering suicide. Uh, so he came up with his plan in his mind. Uh, it came to a point where he was thinking that, uh, well, he actually did it. He climbed up on a ledge of a building and started to walk along that ledge. And um, he was thinking that if he should slip, because he wasn't going to jump, but if he should slip, uh, it would be more of an accident, right, than a suicide attempt. Um, if he lost his life because he had slipped, then in a way he would be ending what he was going through. And he wouldn't have to face uh, what he was suffering from again. And, uh, well, he, he, he actually survived that walking on the ledge and he actually is doing very well today. Uh, the problem that we face, most of us, uh, have a desire to be happy. And we work towards that, to be free from pain and, and suffering. Uh, that many of us are going through. We want the good life, problem-free lives, and we work towards that, and we continually search for programs or, or, or ways to get to that part where we can be problem-free and suffering-free. Um, only a foolish person would wake up day after day wishing that it would be a day filled with, with suffering. Uh, we learn from the Bible that God wants to bless us, wants to give us a good life, a life of abundance. Yet we also learn that suffering is part and parcel of God's order of things. Of course, we don't go about looking uh, for pain and suffering, but neither should we be surprised or, or stunned when it comes our way, when it comes knocking on our door and Sometimes he doesn't even wait for us to open the door. Sometimes we just find it inside our living room. And it's, it's coming to our homes, coming to our lives, really, without any permission. N no one is exempt from suffering. We all go through it in some degree or the other. Some of us are going through it right away. Uh, and some of us... Uh, well, we finish right away, and some of us uh, have to go through it for a long, long time. Everyone is going to suffer. Uh, the only question really is when it's going to come. The only decision you are going to have to make when it comes is, will you go through it with Jesus or without Jesus Christ? The Bible says that there is a unique fellowship with Jesus that happens, a fellowship between us and him uh, when we go through suffering in our lives. In 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12 to 13, it says, Dear friends, don't be bewildered or surprised when you go through the fiery trials ahead, for this is no strange, unusual thing that is going to happen to you. Instead, be really glad. Because these trials will make you partners with Christ in his suffering. And afterwards, you will have the wonderful joy of sharing his glory in that coming day when it will be displayed. Martin Luther King said that if a problem comes upon us that causes us to suffer, then we should suffer patiently and know that it is good and profitable for us. When we go through difficult times and suffer through these times, we, we float certain questions and want answers to these questions. Questions like, does God really care about me? I'm sure you've asked yourself that before when you're going to a deep uh, problem. Does God care about my life? 
Does God really love me? Am I really more valuable than many, many sparrows? Uh, how Has God any idea how hard and painful this, this lesson is for me? Does He actually know the depth of the suffering that I am going through today? Does He really want me to, to fail in my faith? Is there any truth that He would never allow me to bear more than I can bear? What exactly does He want out of my life? What is His will for me, really? I don't know if you've noticed, but I've noticed it in my life. I've observed that when things go my way, we hardly review how we get there in the first place. Most of the time, the glory goes to us. We boast about it. We boast about our skills, the way we maneuvered around the problem or solved it. And very seldom does God get uh, the credit for blessing us. But suffering is a different matter altogether. It gets our attention. It brings us to our knees and reconnects us to, to God and, and just pushes us into having a deep and serious conversation with the God who made us. Why do we suffer? Is it that God causes it? Does, it? does He actually allow it? Is He a, you know, a hands-off God when it comes to our suffering? Why, why do we suffer? I'm sure you've asked yourself that question as well. Uh, like a father, con you know, um, consoling his, his crying child for a pain that no words can describe, our Heavenly Father, you know, just embraces us and dries our tears when we come into His presence, when we cry out to Him because of our suffering. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6 to 7, it says, So humble yourself under God's strong hand and His own good time. And, well, in His own good time, He will lift you up. You can throw the whole weight of your anxieties upon Him. For you are His personal concern. Give Him your pain, your worries, your suffering. The Bible says you are his personal concern. Well, there are several reasons why um, we go through suffering. Maybe it could be because of an innocent mistake, a wrong judgment call, a result of an integrity issue. Environmental changes is part of it. Sometimes um, evil happens. Sometimes God is um, disciplining us. And sometimes God is testing us and checking our hearts. An innocent mistake can happen unexpectedly. There is no intention to do anything wrong, but we still suffer from the consequences of it. A legitimate investment that didn't work out, making you lose all your savings. Um, when we were very young, you know, we used to stay in my cousin's place. Uh, my mom and my dad would leave us there uh, when they'd go to work. And uh, an older cousin uh, would take care of us. And my brother and that older cousin of mine, um, one day they were playing with water pistols and they were playing too near uh, well, a bee's nest. And they had accidentally uh, hit the nest. Uh, before you knew it, the, the bees got into a really crazy frenzy and started to chase both of them. And actually, they, they got some really bad stings. They entered the house and, you know, the house wasn't that Secure. There were holes where the bees could enter, and it, 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 they actually, the, the bees actually chased them into the house, and you know they, well, they were in pain for a while. But it was an innocent mistake. Uh, there are no 
guidelines for an innocent mistake. We, it happens to us every now and again. They just happen. And then there's the issue of a wrong judgment call. Um, when I was growing up, uh, one of the things I wanted was to have a, you know, a, a giant kite. So my dad um, uh, got me one. We, we covered it together. It was pretty tall. It was like maybe four, three, four feet tall. And, you know, I've never flown a uh, giant kite before, but I've flown smaller kites. And I was so excited. And, um, you know, when I uh, joined this group of kids who were also flying kites, uh, I, I made the wrong judgment call of just flying my kite too near those other giant kites. And uh, what I didn't know was, well, my dad warned me not to stay too close to the other kites because, you know, some of the kites, and I don't know if you remember this, some of the kites, you know, they call, they had their strings that they used to fly it. They, they had, um, uh, they, they, in Tagalog, it's called bubug. So they would dip the strings I into uh, starch and then, uh, so that the very, very finely crushed uh, glass could stick to the strings and then it would dry up. And those strings were like abrasive. They could actually cut strings of other kites. And um, I had stayed too close to those kites and I couldn't say or tell which ones were flying kites with those type of strings. Well, in the end, my string did get cut and I lost that well, that large kite that I really, really like. So there, there was a wrong judgment call on, on my part. There were some guidelines. My dad said, don't stay too close. Uh, and uh, if I had followed those guidelines, then it, I would have prevented this, this error in judgment. But I did not. And then there are integrity issues. We can suffer the, co the consequences of a wrong judgment call or an innocent mistake. And then we can also suffer by violating integrity issues. We get into trouble because of our dishonesty. We, we sin. Overpromising on commitments or overselling features of a product just to make a sale. When we violate uh, this, we, we suffer the consequences and must bear the moral consequences of these decisions. We go beyond the prescribed speed limit and we get the ticket. Um, when I was very young, I, like I said, I had, you know, every now and again, I would stay in my cousin's place. And uh, there was one time that I saw a, a you know, a, a, well, a green pen. And I've never seen a green pen. You know, we've always had like blue pens at home or black. But this was a green pen and the casing was very different. My aunt had brought it home from one of her conferences. And I had looked at the pen and I said, I want that pen. So when no one was looking, before my dad and my mom, you know, before they picked me up, I got the green pen and I, I kept it in my bag. Um, my dad discovered that I had this, this pen when he had gone through my things and asked where I got it. And I had to tell him the truth that I had taken it from uh, my cousin's place and to add to that problem, well, I started to lie and I said, oh, I had every intention of returning it the next day. That wasn't true. I wanted to keep it. I had to be punished for that and I, I, I suffered because of that. I returned the pen and I had to apologize to my cousins and my aunt. I had to tell them that, yes, I, I took the pen and I had to do that while my dad was watching me. Uh, sometimes the environment changes. Life happens. Can't control it. Uh, perhaps we did nothing wrong, 
But when the environment around us changes uh, or, or turns against us, then we also end up suffering the consequences of environmental changes. The pandemic is one. A lot of people uh, took out loans. I, I, I know people who took out loans. I'm sure you know people who took out loans uh, for new business ventures in the mall. But the lockdown happened. They, they put in all their life savings to put up a few stars and then the malls were closed. And the money, you know, wasn't enough to sustain uh, waiting it out. And so they ended up broke or, or losing properties. It, it's painful. They had to suffer because of an environmental change. Um, your loved one is rushed to the hospital, but the traffic is so bad that he or she doesn't get there in time. Uh, crops are planted with the promise of great harvest, but the severe storm hits and the crops are destroyed. Uh, that happened to me once. I uh, was in partnership with some friends and we had a chicken farm. And, you know, we had just started out uh, growing out the chicks. And we had also gotten other people to grow out the chicks. And we, you know, how it works is when it, it's finally ready for harvest, then uh, you get to sell it, and then they get a share. Well, before we could even harvest the chicks, a big storm happened here in the country and destroyed all the chicken houses, and we lost the whole investment. Uh, no fault of our own, but it happens, and we suffered for it. Uh, friendships were strained, and money was lost. Um, sometimes evil happens. It's not a perfect world out there. You know that. Evil is present in the world. It's a broken world because of sin. We keep hoping it isn't so, but evil does exist. Unfair things can happen to the nicest and best people. A friend of mine had an accident um, at the service road at SLX. Uh, before... Uh, somewhere between Merville and uh, Marcelo Green Village. And um, her car was totally wrecked. And she, she almost lost her life. Her injuries were life-threatening. She was inside the car. And people had approached her, and she was thinking because she couldn't see uh, because of all the glass and, and the blood on her face. And she was saying, oh, finally, finally, somebody's going somebody's gonna to come and save me. But these people approached her. And instead of helping her, they, they just moved her aside, which made her injuries worse. And they started to steal from her, her bag, and whatever was in the car. And um, uh, because of that moving of her, that, that carelessness of these people, that, you know, the, the evil that had happened, um, she ended up, uh, well, a paraplegic, and she's been confined to the wheelchair ever since. Sometimes God disciplines us. That's another reason why we suffer. No one else may be aware of the sin, but God sees what man cannot see. And what God knows, God will discipline. God will use certain situations to, to form our character. Uh, in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 7 to 8, it says, Bear what you have to bear as chastening, as God's dealing with you as sons. No true son ever grows up uncorrected by his father. For if you had no experience of the correction which all sons have to bear, you might well doubt the legitimacy of your sonship. After all, when we were children, we had fathers who corrected us, and we respected them for it. Can we not much more readily submit to a heavenly father's discipline and learn how to live? Sometimes we suffer because God is testing us to see if our character is pure. It happened to Abraham. God tested Abraham by asking him to sacrifice his only son. 
but tells Abraham at the last minute not to hurt the boy. Let me read to you how uh, it happened in Genesis chapter 22, verse 11 to 12, when God had stopped <coughs> Abraham from uh, going on with the sacrifice of his son. At that moment, it says, the angel of God shouted to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Yes, Lord, he answered, uh, lay down the knife. Don't hurt the lad in any way, the angel said, for I know that God is first in your life. You have not withheld even your beloved son from me. Is God really first in your life? Is there anything in your life that holds more weight than that of God in your heart? Ambition, money, power, influence, position, the adulation of men, fame, glory. What holds more weight in your life? God tests us to check if our character is pure. Proverbs 17 verse 3 says, Fire tests the purity of silver and gold, but the Lord tests the heart. Maybe by now it's pretty clear that suffering isn't easy to escape from. Suffering may be because of our own makings, or it could be because of someone else's fault or the environment. Suffering can be brought about by an honest mistake or a result of sin. Whatever the cause of our, our suffering, we can either humble ourselves and surrender to God's plan, or we can, you know, we can just resist it. Um, we can resist God. But what we cannot escape from is suffering. Like eating and drinking and breathing, suffering is part and parcel of our lives. In an attempt to avoid suffering, and before we finally bow down in humility to God's plan, we attempt or employ certain ways to escape the grip of suffering. We plead with God's sense of fairness. We question if, if God is being fair. Lord, is this fair? This is me. Uh, what you're doing isn't fair. We do this when we don't like the way we are being treated. Most of the time, we conclude that, yes, God is unfair. The Bible says in Psalm 34, verse 19, the righteous person faces many troubles, but the Lord comes to the rescue each time. Now think about it. He comes to the rescue each time. Is that unfair? Sometimes we compare ourselves to others, telling God that we, we are more deserving than the guy next to us a friend or a neighbor. Other times, we, we want to exchange places with other people, uh, thinking that if we did, then we would have a better life. We wish that we were living their lives and not ours. But Psalm 49, uh, verse 16 to 17 says, Be not afraid when a man becomes rich, when the glory of his house increases. For when he dies, he will carry nothing away. His glory will not go down after him. At other times, we curl our lips and pout and sulk. Mm. I do that every now and again, more often than I'd like to. We begin to feel sorry for ourselves. We, we make a long face at the suffering we are going through. And uh, sometimes we end up shouting. <clears throat> angry at God. We raise our voices, you know, we raise our fists and we, we, we complain because of the pain and suffering and uh, we complain like crazy. Lord, you know, would it spoil some vast eternal plan to take away this trouble and, and suffering? In, in James chapter 1 verse 20, it says, human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. So it doesn't help. You can Raise your fist like crazy, but it doesn't help. After all the shouting, and you don't get what you want, then doubt starts to set in, and you start to ask, is God real? In questioning his existence, we become afraid. 
But the scripture reminds us in Isaiah 41 verse 10. It tells us, don't be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you with my victorious right hand. You may not be particularly, um, well, you don't go through these stages in the order that I mentioned. <coughs> but we definitely go through a set of emotions and negative thoughts when we go through suffering. That's for sure. Our goal shouldn't be how to avoid suffering, but enjoying the fellowship of sharing in Christ's suffering. Not to waver in times of trouble, not to be fearful or disturbed, to be brave against what we are facing, to endure patiently, and to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. There will be times when God will deliver us according to what we want and what we have asked, but there will, I think, more often, <coughs> uh, God will want to show us that He has bigger plans for us. <coughs> and sometimes, it takes time. Our role is to give him all our cares and our worries. In one of David's Psalms, Psalm 40, verse 11 to 13, David cries out to God and, and, and pens these words, Lord, don't hold back your, your tender mercies for me. Let your unfailing love and faithfulness always protect me. For troubles around me, there are too many to count. My sins pile up so high. I can't see my way out. They outnumber the hairs on my head. I have lost all courage. Please, Lord, rescue me. Come quickly, Lord, and help me. Wow, that's, <coughs> that's a prayer we, we all end up saying at certain points in our lives when we're going through suffering. When we go through suffering, we can be assured that Jesus knows precisely what we are going through. We know this because in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15 to 16, uh, it reminds us that He will help in our time of need. Let's read it. For our help and comfort, Jesus the great high priest, seeing that we have a great high priest who has entered the inmost heaven, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold firmly to our faith. For we have no superhuman high priest to whom our weaknesses are unintelligible. He himself has shared fully in all our experiences of temptation, except that he never sinned. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with fullest confidence that we may receive mercy for our failures and grace to help in the hour of need. Because Christ suffer just as we do, we can look to, to Jesus as a model for our own demeanor when facing suffering. The ministry of the Holy Spirit is personal. We will never understand how personal until we have actually began to struggle with the question as to whether God really cares about us or not. Not until we are at the end of our rope, when there is nowhere else to hide or to run to. When we are fresh out of ideas and we don't know how to resolve a problem or a situation that we are in or experiencing. No help from friends is available, neither in influence or, or money or wise counsel. You've used up all your favors. There's no one else to ask. No one wants to help anymore. And you are fresh out of hope. And you are in this dark hole. Not just for a day, but for weeks and months, possibly years. Some of you are going through that today. Too long a heartache. Too long to be without hope. Only until you come to a point that you would lose your life at any moment. Unless Jesus shows you mercy and reaches out to hold your hand. Then, and only then, will you learn to trust Him completely. Once you experience crossing over to the boundary of His grace, will you and I learn? to trust Him with all our might. Once we have experienced the saving grace of God, reach down to save us from our suffering. Uh, only then will the devil lose his power to intimidate us and to oppress us. We've all heard the saying, it's not over till it's over. No matter how hard life can become, we should never quit. 
There is always another way, another road of grace available. While there is breath in our lungs, there will always be another way. Why is this? Because our promise from God is a promise of restoration. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10, it says, And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong and firm and steadfast. My dear friends, the life we have, the good life we aspire to have and dream of having, will include suffering. But in it, we get to experience that unique fellowship of sharing the suffering of our Lord Jesus Christ. We will suffer for many reasons, and we will suffer in varying degrees of pain because of these reasons. Every person is marked for suffering. All of us at one time or another will go through this. Our reasons will be different from each other, and there will be many reasons. But there will be only one hope that we can hold on to and cry out to and expect grace and restoration. That hope will be Jesus and no other. Suffering is and will always be part of our life. And if we face it head on and not hide from it or avoid it, face it with our Savior at our side, it can become one of the sweetest parts of our life. Let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord, that you, you continue to, to save and to rescue. You continue to assure us that uh, you are our hope, that you continue to help us through the things that we go through. You continue to teach us to cross over into grace, this beautiful uh, boundary of grace where we can be assured that we are loved by you. Father, I pray for those who are going through suffering at this time. I pray that you embrace them, continue to mend and to heal what needs to be mended and what needs to be healed, Lord God. Continue to restore. That is your promise, Lord. And it will happen, Lord. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Good morning without walls. Uh, the next link will be about communion. So, so don't leave. Uh, join us for communion. Um, God bless you. Hello, Well family. My name is Sandra Lazo. As some of you might know me as Sandy. I am part of the music ministry and the creative team of Without Walls Ministries. A week ago, a friend of mine called Pastor Luigi and shared her situation with him. She said she was in a very dark place in her life. She said she was suffering mentally and emotionally, and even spiritually. She felt broken. She had no one to trust full of anxiety, left to feel alone. Pastor Luigi prayed for her and called me to continue to watch over her. So I did. I messaged her and the whole week just asked her where she was at. The whole time I was asking God, how can I show this person your grace and your faithfulness still abounds even though she was suffering. Fast forward to the end of that week. We were choosing our last song. And I suddenly remembered this song that our worship leader, Jay, suggested a while back. I told him, let's do that song. He agreed, and I started to listen back. And I tried to just immerse once more to the lyrics of the song. As I was listening to the song, tears welled up in my eyes, and I could not stop crying. The lyrics of the song was my conversation with my friend. I realized then and there 
that God was listening to us this whole time. He heard every sigh, every pause, and saved every tear that I was sharing with my friend. God was listening. In Psalm 61 verse 1, it says, Hear my cry, O God. Attend to my prayer. From the end of the earth, I will cry to you. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. So church, if you're going through the same darkness, if you feel alone with no one to trust, you feel that your feet are shackled to the ground, to the uncertainties of this life, pulled down by the weight of your sin, God is saying, I am listening. I am with you. I will restore. So join me as we marvel at his grace once more. And may we never forget that through suffering, grief, and in glory, our lips will continually say, Great is his faithfulness. If you have felt the dark of night Questioning what is out of sight He is the answer, He is the light If you have felt the weight of sin Bound by the shame that's hemmed you in He'll break the chains, He will fall Lift your head Morning is coming There's more to the story Don't forget In grief and in glory So great is His faithfulness felt broken and betrayed no one to trust alone afraid he'll come for you he knows your name if you wrestled with the ache of loss and why this has been your old walk he bore your pain he bore your His faithfulness perfect Sovereign fortress Great is His faithfulness
In grief and in glory, so great is His faithfulness. Oh, in grief and in glory, so great is His faithfulness. Amen. Indeed, great is His faithfulness. We thank you for joining us today. Communion will begin shortly via Zoom. For your tithes and offerings, kindly scan the QR code on the screen. And thank you so much for your generosity if you have already given. We are able to continue on with the work because of your contributions. Please follow all our social media accounts and join our Viper community to stay updated with church-related news. We'll see you all later at 3 p.m. for our Tagalog service and again on Wednesday at 7 p.m. for Wow Wednesday.